So, and he prayed earnestly. See, see that word earnestly? So that goes with that, you know, prayer of supplication. That's what prayer of supplication means, is to pray earnestly. He says that he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not for the, on the earth for the, by the space of three, is, three years and six months. He prayed again that heaven gave rain, the earth brought forth fruit. So he's talking about uh, the prayer here that we can intercede, or not at least intercede, uh, supplicate for one, another person. Now look at this over here. Uh, let's go back to let's go back to um, First Timothy. First Timothy two. <clears throat> I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, uh, and intercessions, uh, and giving of thanks. Uh, so it's in the plural form. So there, there, there is, there is, uh, you know, we, we we're gonna pray, not just one time. We're gonna pray for more than one. We're gonna pray more than one time. You know, so the only time you pray one time is when you pray for yourself about asking God for some item or something about your life, and you pray and you believe at that very moment the prayer of faith is is that. Because you believe you receive something that you don't have yet, and you say you have what you don't have yet in the natural. That's that's a prayer of faith that you believe, uh, not with your physical eye, not with your emotions. You believe according to the Bible that you receive something. So the prayer of faith operates. You know, it's one kind of prayer. The prayer of faith operates this way: that you that you get a promise of God, and you read the promise of God. You meditate on the promise of God. You read it to yourself, you talk to that scripture to yourself, and say, oh, this belongs to me, and so forth. You meditate on it until it's imprinted in your spirit through meditation. Just like we meditate, if you worry, how many of you ever worried in your life about something? Just, just a few of you. The rest of you, I'm going to talk to these guys who lift their hands up. Okay, so, so I worry. I, I find that I even I, I get the temptation to worry. Because the thoughts come to me, this is not going to work. You're not going to get the 100000 100, Oh, yeah, you got the money for this, but you won't get that over there. So, the, the, you know, it'll tell you about that. So right now we're making plans to build something else over here, Joe. Joe, we're making plans over here. <laughs> I told him that last year. <laughs> but, but you see, okay, so you have to believe that you receive. You got to take the scripture and believe that you receive. You see, have, have something. In your heart. And you, if you don't have it in your heart yet, you're not going to receive it. Because you've got to believe that you receive it. Where do you receive it? It's in your heart. Yes. You receive it in your heart. What's your heart? Your heart is your spirit. And your spirit only eats the, the word of God, the scripture. Amen. You take that scripture and put it in your heart. And you say, I receive it in the name of Jesus. And then you feel, ooh, you feel joy in there. You feel, and then you feel at peace when you think about it. That's the key. Is that you feel peace. Oh, you see terrible things out there, and in your mind it's horrible, and you think about it, but on the inside you just sense, oh, yeah, God's word is true. That's a prayer of faith. So you receive something when you don't have it, when you don't have it. Okay, but you have to do that spiritually, right? Prayer of faith said, I believe I receive. You receive Jesus like that. You didn't hold Jesus in your hand. To Jesus, I receive you. No, you receive it in your heart, right? I believe Jesus, I, I receive you in my heart. So that's the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith is believing without seeing something. If you look at the scriptures that, you know, you receive what you don't see. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. And then it's crazy to our mind, right? How can you receive something you can't see? It's like Dr. Cho, remember, you've ever read Dr. Cho? How many of you have ever read about Dr. Cho? And they said one time, at that time in Korea, there's a huge church in Korea. They pray all the time. And they, uh, he, he uh, was believing God for something, you know, like an item, like a bicycle in, in, in the 1930. It was huge to have a bicycle. Only a very rich person would have a bicycle. So he believed, he said, I'm going to, I, to preach, I need the transfer, transportation. I've got to have a bicycle. So he, he believed God for a bicycle. He said, I, I thank God I received. So he called what they call the fourth dimension. They call it, it's a spirit. And so he believed that he received it. So 
people want to come home to his house to see his bicycle. So we don't want to come to your house to see your bicycle. And they come to his house. They said, where's your bicycle? He said, I have it in here in my heart. <laughs> you see, see, the Bible says, the Bible says the way we, how did we receive Jesus? The Bible says uh, we confess, we believe, we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart. We, we believe that we receive in our heart. Your heart is your spirit. You believe in your spirit that you receive it. And that's how it works. And then from then on, we, we should, and every time you think about it, instead of worrying about it, you just say, thank God. Oh, I thank God. You buy faith. When you don't feel like it, when every fiber of your emotions and your mentality tells you you don't have it, you just go by faith. Say, Lord, thank you for my healing. Thank you for healing my mom. Thank you that we got that money. Thank you what the doctor said. He said, I can never be healed. But Father, you said all things are possible. Thank you that I have it. You said I can receive. And I, and I, and I thank God every time somebody asks you, how are you doing? You say, oh, I'm doing great. Is that thing, oh, yeah, it's coming in. Praise God, I, I believe I receive. And yet you're, you're still sick. Yeah, yet you're still taking the medicine. Yet you're still smoking that cigarette. You're doing it by faith. Thank God. And that's the way when you're praying for in the, in the, in, when you're praying, you got to do the same thing that you do for praying for other people when you're, when you're praying for yourself. When you supplicate, you gotta, you got to do the same thing. How are you going to do that for other people when you can't do it for yourself? Come on. Amen. Like, you know, so, you know, when we pray for people, we just casually, that's, maybe that's why it doesn't work. Because we're not, we're, not, we're not fervent enough to say, man, I'm going to believe God for you. If I have to slap the devil myself, I'm going to believe God for you. Amen. So we have to believe that way. So that's the way the prayer works. So there's all kinds of prayers, especially when you give yourself to God. You don't give yourself to God one time and it all works out. I gave myself to God. I have no more temptation. Isn't that wonderful? Huh? No, no more problems? And so, no, you have to do it almost every day if you have to. If you do have to do it every week or every time you come to church, say, God, I'm really sorry for all this week. I, mess, I messed up this week. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me. Cleanse me with your blood. And then start worshiping again. And thank God I just move on again. And the devil will try to bl blame things. And say, hey, look at you, you know, try to throw guilt on you, condemnation on you. That's not coming from God. Holy Ghost never does that. And God never does that. He said, come on in, boys. I realize that's why I gave you the Holy Spirit. That's why I washed you with my blood. I know you'd be this weak. You know, I know you'd fail. I remember when I got born again, God called me to the ministry, and I fell miserably, and the devil got on me so badly, I thought I lost my salvation, I thought I got away from God so good, and then I said to myself, I was in my kitchen like two days ago, the word of the Lord came up onto me, he said, you know, he says, one word can change your life, and I, and I said that out to myself in my kitchen, I said, one word can change your life, I was thinking about somebody else, one word can make a difference, one word can change your life. And, and I kept saying that about three times. And the Lord said, that, said this to me. One word changed your life, didn't it? And brought me, uh, you know, Romans eleven twenty nine, 29. The gifts and callings of God are without repentance. When God calls you, he never changes his mind. Amen. You might change your mind. He might change your mind. And he might put condemnation. But I haven't changed in my mind. I never change. I'm always the same. Amen. So if you ever miss God... Hey, just go ahead and receive your, 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 your forgiveness again. And so these are things that affect people when they're trying to pray fervency, when they're praying, trying to pray intercession. They say, you, who do you think you are interceding? And he gets on you. Look at this over there in your family. Look what's just happening over there. You can't pray. No, hey, man, I'm a righteous man. I can receive. I believe I receive in the name of Jesus. I believe I'm a righteous man. Everybody say, I'm a righteous. Because, because of the blood of Jesus, I am righteous. Say, my prayer, my supplication, my intercession, my prayer is powerful. So, so you know, you got to say that to yourself. My prayer is powerful. 
When I pray, the power of God comes in. Yeah. And, and Brother Higgins said, he said he felt so dry one service. He's preaching. Everybody seems to be so dry. He was dry. He didn't know if, if the Holy Ghost was, was there, and naturally speaking, of course. You know, he didn't, you know, some services you could do anything. And uh, I mean, everybody, ooh, so the, so the place is all jerking and driving away, right? And he said, the first one up here that will be healed. And all of a sudden, there was somebody coming with a heart problem, really bad heart problem. Oh, Lord, why don't you send somebody with a headache? <laughs> at, least, at least you can sort of uh, fake that. But we need to understand that when you pray, the power of God is going to flow. Amen? So intercession here, intercessions, now intercessions, now we're going to pray intercessions not just one time, we're going to do it over again. So the only time, see, intercession is a word, as we're talking today, intercession is only mentioned three times in the New Testament. One time was when we pray for, for all men or people who are not saved. It makes reference, intercession is only made reference, referring to people who are not saved or Christians who got on so far away from themselves they cannot come back on their own. They got so lost. How many people know that you get Christians who get, get away so far away, they don't know how, how to find their way back? They got caught up. And I, I believe, I'm going to say this, some people who walked away from church, in this church, they got away from church, they thought they could just miss church anytime. They can't come back, though. They, they can't come back on their own. They just can't come back and enjoy the God's presence. They, they can't feel comfortable. If you get around them, they get uncomfortable. If you say anything, they might even get uh, offended because you're there. Because the devil's at work in their life. And so we need to pray for these kinds of people. Amen. You know, to get around. Like, you know, when, when, you're not, when you're not living right and doing what you're supposed to do, it might not be like you're going around murdering people and committing adultery and selling drugs. It, it could be you're just not obeying God. You're not going to church, you're not tithing, you're not giving money, not using your talent for God, not showing up on church, showing there your support. Even just those things alone can really make you feel lousy. So the devil gets in, puts condemnation on people, and we need to pray for these kinds of people. They get away so far away from God. Some, some people get away, so I see people get away so far from God. Yesterday, I, I went to, um, I made a, a mistake last year about this time. I went to TV Tell, and I told uh, the people over there at the store, uh, at Interse Inter I said, listen, you know, I said, Th this phone, uh, I got, this is a brand new phone. I just come here like a few months ago. He said, she, oh, so how long, how long? A few months ago. He said, tick, 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 tick. no, you were here last year. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was there last year. But you know what happened? I came there for my daughters a couple months, and I got mixed up. But I, was, I bought a new phone last year. I'm a good customer. I'm a very good customer. <laughs> I, I got so many phones, I don't know which one to answer. <laughs> but I went there. I said, I don't, I don't have. So he said, no, you were here last year. I said, okay. So I came here with this problem. I came here with a uh, 30, uh, 64 gigabyte. I, I had a 64 gigabyte. I wanted something bigger. So I signed a paper to get, to, to get a brand new phone, so they gave me a brand new phone. This young lady seemed like she didn't know what she was doing, but I, I trusted her. I trusted she could do. So what happened, she gave me a smaller one. I've had a smaller phone for about a one year. I didn't know it. And I'm doing all I can. I said, what's going on? I've been, uh, you know, I've been all doing all kinds of stuff with my computer, downloading stuff, downsizing, taking pictures away, taking programs off, taking all kinds of buttons off and all kinds of stuff. And I'm going smaller, smaller, smaller. <laughs> See, it, it didn't work because I didn't have the right, the, the right kind of things, right? That's how prayer is. You get frustrated. And it's not working. Something's not, something's not right. You say, well, I thought I uh, did this right thing. So we need to go step by step and examine uh, why our prayers are working. So, uh, so it says intercession, so only three times intercession is mentioned in the New Testament. One time only, as you read here in that scripture, for all men. Okay, so, so 
uh, if you examine the scripture, you'll understand that it means all men. So it, it says for kings, for all those in authority, and most of those people, most of them, maybe 99% of them, were not Christians. So we have to pray. You understand this, if leaders are not Christians, you know who's going to be a, a boss over them? The spirit of this world. So we are the salt of the world, the light of the world. We can pray. God only has license to move on our government if we pray. That's the only way he has access to people out there is through our prayer. And we can pray so that God will move. You know the Bible says that God will move the hand, the, 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 his hand on, on the king. He will touch people. He will change our nation through our lives. That's why we've got to pray for our leadership. Instead of, instead of uh, uh, you know, condemning our leaders for not doing So they can't help it, those guys. Some of those people can't help it. The devil is at work, and they're working only for maybe perhaps for, for themselves or for money. But maybe, you know, they like to, maybe they like the idea of uh, working for, for people and helping people, right? But, you know, the devil gets in there somehow. He ever gets at you? He'll get at you. And try to do things in your life to, to get in, in your life. He knows what, what's the, what's depressed in your life. And so, so intercession, the second word intercession is used, is mentioned in the, when the Holy Spirit intercedes for us through Holy Ghost, tongues, prayer. Then he'll take your spirit and he'll go move through your tongue and he'll pray the perfect will of God for the situation you're by faith praying over in tongues for. Yeah. You say, God, in the name of Jesus, I don't know how to pray for this. I prayed in English. I prayed in English. It's all I know. But I don't know what this, I can't see everything. So I'm trusting Holy Spirit for you to pray the, the will of God for this person or this situation right now to bring the will of God. Because Romans 8, 26, 27, 28 tells us when we pray in tongues, we pray the purpose of God, the will of God for that person's life. Or that situation. So we pray in tongues. So you say, well, how long do you do that? Until you get that release in your, in your life that, you, that you, you got the answer. You keep praying in tongues. It, it says, God, I'm going to pray over this situation again in tongues. I don't know how it's going to work out. And uh, I'm going to pray. In the name of Jesus. And I know... That God will work. You know, uh, we were reading Brother Higgins, uh, um, you know, uh, story there again. Like, you read stories so many different times. He, he gives you a different uh, whatever he needs to give for that uh, session, you know, an idea. When he died, he was 17 years old. And he went to hell, uh, the gates of hell, three times. He saw hell. He smelled hell. He, he felt hell. He, and he saw hell. He said the creature grabbed him by the arm. It was going to take him to the gates of hell. And he heard a voice from heaven say something. And that place shook and he shook. And he said he felt like a vacuum pull him back up to heaven or towards the earth. And that happened three times. And the third time, he said he, 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 he was, first of all, when he was going to hell, he said, God, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a church member. I go to church. You know, uh, God, you know, uh, you know, he says that uh, I, I give and I, I do all these things. He says, you know, uh, he's asking God, he says, I was baptized in water. And he kept going down. Going down, this creature grabbed him. He says, I'm going to fight my way. Uh, that creature is coming to grab me. He says, I'm going to fight and do my best. He says, I didn't have any power. The, the thing just grabbed him. A creature, a, a demon grabbed him, pulled, tried to pull him in. And he, that place shook again. He said, pull him back up. He said, while he's going back up, and he, while he's going, his spirit was there, he said, I, I, I started praying. I prayed the sinner's prayer. He, he received Jesus Christ. And he, and he got born again at that moment. As he was coming up out of that thing, he said, I come up, and I, I, was come, I came back into my body, and my words picked up what I was praying in the spirit. I was praying the sinner's prayer, asking Jesus to come in his life. And he said, just then, I heard my mom praying in the hallway. I heard my mom praying so loud in the hallway, praying in tongues, interceding in the Holy Spirit, praying for, for me not to go to hell, not to get saved. And he said, he prayed. my mom prayed the, inter, the prayer of intercession and, and prayed that I wouldn't die. You see that in Jude, right? We're snatching people out of, the, out of the fires of hell. That's in the Bible. Read Jude. 
You can snatch people, pray for them. We can intercede for people and believe God. Don't give up on people. You know, because people die and people go away because people have given up on them. People given up on them. We can't give up on people. Some dad called me from somewhere out west today. Send me, said, I'm praying for my kids. I'm praying for my, my wife is on drugs. My kids need me. My kids, you know, they're, they're all away. I, I come back to Jesus. I'm saying, I was a Christian man. He, the whole, he used to come to this church. I said, thank God. I, I believe you. I believe what you're saying. I believe what you're saying. I said, they pray, because you're the only one. Now they have somebody that can stand for them in prayer Amen. and believe. This guy was a member of the, uh, uh, the Hell's Angels uh, before, and and uh, he got born again, almost died a couple of times. And, and he has a friend, of, friend, a mutual friend of mine who's a pastor, has been praying for him for quite a while. He's not dead because somebody stood in, in a gap for him, prayed for him, believed for him. And every time you think about your children, you say, thank God. I want to thank you, Father. I see them with me in the front row here. Praise God. This chair, these chairs are waiting for your children. Right now. All your daughters, your grandkids are sitting back here. Thank God. See them there. See them there. It's not, it's not possible. It is possible. Yeah. It's only possible because you're not seeing it. You're not seeing it. Yeah. You know, um, um, I was thinking about yesterday, uh, Deuteronomy 28, 28 says that, you know, um, that blindness is a curse of the law. Uh, uh, panic attacks is a curse of the law, according to Deuteronomy 28, 28. Having panic attacks is a curse of the law. Having, having those problems is a curse of the law, according to the Word of God. Uh, having cancer is a curse of the law. But Jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law. We need to stand. You know the word uh, when the Bible says that in Romans 8.26, the Bible says what you stand against, the Holy Spirit stands against. If you don't stand against it, he's not gonna, he can't do it. Holy Spirit will not stand against sickness unless you stand against it. He said, no, no, I will not receive sickness and disease. I will not tolerate it in the name of Jesus. You got to stand against it. You got to speak against it. You got to, you got to see, you make a choice right now. I'm standing against it. Oh, it seems like you're going down. It seems that your kids will never come back. It seems you'll never go back to where you're supposed to go, but you believe God, trust God. There's people who discover this that we preach from, that we talk about today, where we're dying. We talk about men of God who, who are dying. He said, I'm going to trust God. And, and they, they live because they believe God. You know, uh, many, many people. So uh, intercession, basically, by definition, is when we stand in the gap for someone. Intercession means, uh, means a go-between. A go between two people who are, at, who are at odds with people. Intercession, that's why intercession is only for unbelievers, basically, most of the time. Because they're at odds against, when you're a Christian, you're not at odds. So they need supplication, not intercession. So uh, the, other, the other intercession, the word intercession is, for, is, is mentioned about the Holy, the Holy Spirit. What you stand against He'll stand against. We'll see that when we do our seminar. We'll see that scripture that the Bible says the Holy Spirit, uh, he takes our weaknesses, right? The, the word groanings, and all that is all in there, see? Groanings is inarticulate speech. It means speech that's not obvious to your senses and that you know. So when you pray in tongues, groanings is, is tongues. It means tongues, right? Other, other tongues. So the other scripture is, is found in Hebrews where, where Jesus uh, ever lives to intercede for you. That's the third one. He ever le lives to intercede for you. Jesus is always there listening for you to pray. And he'll stand with you. He'll make sure that what you say will come to pass in your life. He's a high priest of our confession, the Bible says. Hebrews 3 and 1. He said he is a high priest of our confession. Our confession, in other words, what you say, he makes happen. Right? You remember that scripture in Jeremiah one twelve? He says what? Uh, what, you, what you, you know, like he, he makes his promises good in your life. So take a promise, get a promise, and stand on it and, and pray. Let's go, go ahead and stand up. Hi, everyone. I hope you have enjoyed the program. I want to invite you right now to make the biggest decision you ever make in your life 
And that is, according to Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The scripture says we need to believe from our heart and confess with our mouth. So I want to lead you in a prayer today to believe that Jesus Christ is God's son, that he was sent here for your salvation. Very simple prayer. If you just do this prayer, pray this prayer right now, you will be changed forever. You'll never be the same again. So I invite you right now, whoever you are, wherever, whatever you're doing, let's, let's pray together right now. And let's bow our head together and pray this prayer. Close your eyes if you have to help, help sometimes to concentrate. Say, God, I believe that your son, Jesus Christ, was sent here. I believe that Jesus Christ is my salvation. You sent him here to die for me. And he was put on that cross, and he was sent three days to the lower regions of hell. And then on the third day, you, you raise him from the dead. And now he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. I confess him as my Lord and Savior. I give you my heart, O oh Lord. I give you my life. I thank you for changing me today. And now I'm your child. I am born again. If you made that simple prayer today, yours, you'll never be the same again. I want to tell you that life will take on new meaning. Tell us who you are, write to us. Our announcer will tell you some things to help you. And we want to hear from you next time. So God bless you. You've made the biggest decision you've ever made in your whole life. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Friends, if you said that prayer, you can contact us by writing the address on the screen, find us on Facebook, or give us a call at 807-344-1956. We'd love to send you some materials. If you're in the Thunder Bay area, join us for a live service at 360 Black Bay Road. Service times Wednesday at 7 p.m. and Sunday at 10.30 a.m.